So, so far we've learned that usually when you get a Boolean expression, no matter what it looks like, it can usually be reduced down to something referred to as a sum of products expression. And what that is, is, well, as it says on the tin, it's the sum of products. And of course, products in the expression is going to be your AND gates, sum is going to be your OR gates. And so that means that you can usually reduce your circuit down to groups of AND gates, and then usually a single OR gate uh, per expression. So of course, here we have two expressions being created here, so we have two OR gates. And it just so happens that they actually share products, so we can actually share some of these AND gates between some of these results. Uh, and this little exploit allows us to create something referred to as a PLA, which is a very neat and easy way of simplifying these massively complicated expressions using a pattern that's actually really, really repeatable. Uh, and so in electronics, uh, electrical engineers will usually use a PLA to uh, represent multiple Boolean expressions, typically very complex ones, uh, in a single chip. And this allows us to, or this allows electrical engineers to uh, save on chips, which means they can lower the cost, but it also allows them to uh, create some of these more complicated Boolean expressions using something a little bit more simple and easier to understand. Uh, but we can take advantage of this too as, as redstone computer engineers. We can actually create uh, a lot of these Boolean expressions using uh, PLAs made from redstone. And so if we were to translate that into redstone, our, circu our circuit would probably look something like this, where we have groups of AND gates uh, to represent our products, and then we can use our OR gates to produce the sum. So here we have Y1 and Y2, and Y1 of course being the sum of these two AND gates, and Y2 being the sum of these two AND gates, thanks to these OR gates here. And then you can see how the AND gates are the products of A, B, and C in particular combinations uh, through these connections here amongst this matrix. Uh, and this simplifies circuits fairly considerably, but it's not quite there in terms of in terms of simplicity and scalability. We can actually make this quite a bit smaller. We can also make this quite a bit more scalable and thus easier to build and easier to understand. Just so we understand the circuit though, uh, this first AND gate is going to be the product of A and B naught. And if we were to actually follow the lines of each of these inputs, we can see that this line connects over here, which ends up being the input A. And if we follow the other line here, we can see that it connects up over here. Uh, and that ends up being the inverse of input B. So we can see that this AND gate's result is going to be the product of A and B naught. If we think back to when we were manipulating basic logic gates, though, recall that we can actually stretch this AND gate out as much as we want. So what would, uh, what would happen if we were to take these inverters here and actually slide them over to the very lines that they're supposed to connect to. So instead of having these inverters over here, uh, we could instead have them connect back here. So we'll have A connect here and B not connect here. Even though the circuit looks ever so slightly different, it behaves the exact same way if we were to actually uh, flip B to or keep B off and flip A on, uh, the output of this AND gate turns on as it should because this is, of course, the product of A and B naught. And A is on and B is off, which is, of course, A, B naught. So that AND gate should be on. But if we were to actually look at the wiring now, we can see that there's really not much going on over there and it just connects up right here. So really, this is the same wire. Since both those wires, when they connect up to the end here, is basically the same wire, we can effectively consolidate them and turn them into one wire. So as a result, we end up with this NOT gate with a single wire coming out the back, and then any time we need an input for an AND gate, we simply branch off to the side and add a NOT gate, just like this. And this effectively creates one long AND gate uh, with its inputs connected uh, at various points to their appropriate wire. So example, this input is still B naught, and this input is still A. Uh, of course, this is still one wire too, so we even uh, we don't even have to go off to the side like that. We could just stay right in the middle. And this has the advantage of turning this AND gate, which was at one point three blocks wide, into an AND gate that's only one block wide.
So converting all of our AND gates into this format, we can see that we've already created a circuit that's considerably smaller, and it's also very, very scalable, because again, if we want to add another AND gate, all we have to do is add this single NOT gate with a wire running underneath all of our inputs, and then just add a torch wherever we need that input to connect. Now you'll notice that we don't even have to just add two torches. We could add as many torches as we want. Uh, in fact, we could even add a uh, torch on both the uh, main and inverted lines, but this would actually be pointless because this would cause the AND gate to never be active. So you don't really want to do that. Uh, but you can have multiple inputs to this single AND gate, and it doesn't change the circuit at all. So for example, with this particular setup, we still have our three main AND gates, the A, B naught, A, C, and B, C. And with this fourth AND gate that I just added, this AND gate's result is actually going to be the product of A, B, and C, uh, meaning that its output will never be on unless A is on, B is on, and C is on. And yes, I'm aware that these two AND gates came on as well, but of course these are the result of A, C, and B, C respectively. And because A, B, and C are on, both these logic gates will be on as well. But if I were to go ahead and turn off C, uh, we can see that uh, all three of those turn off. That actually isn't a good example. But if I were to turn off B, uh, we can see that this turns off because this requires that A, B, and C all be on. Uh, this one is off because it requires both B and C, but this one is on because it has A and C which are both currently on. So if we were to turn our attention to the OR gates now, we can see that we actually have a very, very simple OR gate configuration here. In fact, it just so happens to be simple enough that I can just put one of these expressions uh, in the middle because it's uh, shared amongst these two outputs, uh, and we can just OR them to either side, and that ends up working just fine. But say we have another configuration where we do actually want to use this fourth AND gate, which is the product of A, B, and C, uh, and we actually want to OR that to both Y2 uh, and Y1, uh, we can see that making this kind of connection ends up being kind of tricky, and we end up having to run wires all around the place just to get this to work properly. Uh, and it doesn't end up looking very great, it ends up uh, being a very impractical and inscalable circuit, which is kind of the opposite of the point of this entire circuit is to be very very easy to build and very very scalable. So how do we fix this? So if we were to arrange our circuit like this with the two outputs kind of veering off to the side here with a line running uh, perpendicular to all of these AND gates, uh, then this allows us to create yet another matrix of the product results and our sum results uh, which allows us to do something similar over here where we can actually just run a line right over uh, all of our outputs, and then wherever we want it to, to connect, we simply just have to drop a block down and connect it with redstone just like that. The problem with this configuration, of course, is as you can see, there's really nothing stopping these the backflow of the redstone signal to travel through the OR gates. So here we have this middle AND gate, which is our AC output, which is shared by both Y1 and Y2. Uh, if that turns on, of course, it's going to send a signal down this redstone wire, and it's going to pass through here, pass through here, which is going to send a signal down to both Y1 and Y2, which is what we want. But if we actually look at this AND gate for A, B naught, uh, it's going to send a signal through to this wire, but not to this wire, and it's going to pass through to Y1. But it's also going to pass through here over this very line to Y2. Uh, and it's going to activate Y2 as well, which is not what we want. We want this uh, A, B naught AND gate to only activate Y1. So we need to isolate these circuits somehow. A repeater would be very, very useful in this situation, but unfortunately we have kind of a little bit of a size restraint here. Unfortunately, because these AND gates are so close together, uh, we really only have room for torches. But that's quite all right here, because as you recall, this torch inverts whatever it gets on the input here and sends it down to the output as the inverse. Uh, so if we were to actually instead just inverse this input right here, uh, and then invert it again with each torch, we would actually get the normal input as a result. And so here you can see, even though this circuit is very, very similar to the AND circuit that we just produced over here, uh, because we're actually inverting this input before going into the torch, uh, it actually acts as an OR circuit. And I can prove it by disconnecting this wire right here. Uh, and you can see that this ends up turning this input on, uh, which then inverts it, turns it off, turns this line off, and then turns this torch on 
which then passes through to Y1, and only Y1. Uh, likewise, if I were to activate this middle uh, AND gate here, which again is AC, which is again shared by Y1 and Y2, uh, it turns this input on, which turns this line off and these inputs on, and those both pass to Y1 and Y2. Ah, but now we have an interesting situation here. We now have a NOT gate followed by a NOT gate. And even though we have the very same thing happening on over here, understand that this is actually needed if we want to connect our our input here to multiple outputs like we have here. So this kind of has to stay. But we can get rid of this NOT gate and this NOT gate at the same time simply by replacing them just with a repeater. And this works exactly the same. So now going back to my previous example, suppose that we wanted Y1 and Y2 to turn on if A, B, and C were all on. Well, we already have that A, B, and C line right here. Uh, so all we have to do is just connect it to Y1 and Y2. Well, because we've designed the circuit in such a way that all we have to do is add a torch, well, all we have to do is add a torch. And so now you can see if I were to turn on A, B, and C, uh, we get both Y1 and Y2 thanks to this AND gate here. Though, of course, it really doesn't help that these were on already. But if I were to actually go ahead and just take a redstone block and turn those off, as if they weren't part of the circuit, you can see that we're still getting Y1 and Y2 uh, because this AND gate is successfully connected to both these outputs. So putting it all together, we end up with a very, very small circuit that's also extremely scalable. We can add more uh, inputs just by scaling it up this way. We can add more AND gates by scaling it out this way. And we can add more OR gates and outputs by scaling it out that way. Uh, and all in all, it makes for a very, very easy way to create multiple logical circuits that can handle very, very complex Boolean expressions. Now, throughout the entire video, I've pretty much alluded to the idea that this circuit is exclusively for PLAs. But don't be fooled, this circuit actually has far more uses than I'm letting on. As we progress through the tutorials, you're actually going to see this circuit pop up more and more often. So don't think for a second that this circuit is a waste of time. Get used to it and be familiar with it, because if you do, it's going to allow you to wrap your head around some very advanced concepts in the near future.